have a contact and um, former Ministry of Interior in Iceland, Agmundur Jonasson, will be chairing the event and pose some questions to SACS. Um, Agmundur. Good morning, Professor Sachs. Can you hear us here? How are you? Very well indeed. I do. I understand you are in Ethiopia, in Addis Ababa? No, no, in rural Ethiopia, so our connection might be a little bit tenuous. I see. So you are traveling very widely. Now, you are a man who hardly needs any introduction. You, uh, Jeffrey Sachs, Professor Jeffrey Sachs, is, of course, a world-renowned economist, father of the Millennium Goals, a global leader in sustainable development, and I would add, Democrat number one. And here we are in Oslo, and we are discussing how democracy can function without functioning media, the media in the shadow of war. And uh, we would uh, like to ask you to start with giving us your insight into the world of the media, if there is or are grounds for this mistrust, we can see this rising mistrust among the young, especially when it comes to Ukraine, Gaza, Julian Assange and uh, WikiLeaks. Now, this is the first part of our questions. And secondly, and we will come to that later if there is time, uh, we would, I would like to ask you about if changes in the media structure, in the way we communicate the rise of the YouTube. We all, for instance, who are gathered here, we know you very well from the world of the YouTubes. If this world is taking over from the uh, conventional media, but if we start with what I mentioned first, the mistrust by the young, is there, are there grounds for this mistrust? Yes, so thank you very much. Let me start by saying, you know, I'm a child of Norway, not literally, but uh, in a career terms, because Gru Brundtland brought sustainable development to the world attention. And I uh, have taken sustainable development to be the theme of my, my career, uh, because I believe very much in the concept. In 2000, 2001, I advised the WHO when Dr. Brundtland was the Director General, and she had a wonderful Chief of Staff, Jonas Garstore, whom you know, uh, who was a, a, a good friend and supporter of the commission that I led for WHO. I learned my public health uh, from Tori Gadal and from others in Norway. So I have been a big, big, admirer all my life of Norway. But I'm very, very disappointed in Norway these days, uh, in my friends, in Jens Stoltenberg, uh, in the NATO focus. It's been war language and war mongering all the time. I know that Norwegian leaders know better, but they don't say it. And it's very discouraging. Now, what is happening, and it's so important to understand, is the United States does U.S. government does not tell the truth about anything. This is what needs to be understood and absorbed. The United States government is an imperial government. And by that, I mean it controls people out of dozens of countries around the world, usually by covert CIA operations sometimes overtly by war. And in order to carry out the kind of imperial policy that the United States pursues, it has to lie every single day. It lies about the covert operations. It lies about the US involvement in uh, the overthrow of Viktor Yanukovych in 2014, which was a CIA operation to a very significant extent. It lies about Nord Stream, of course, who else blew up the pipeline, but the one that promised to do it and the one that has the capability of doing it. It lied about every important foreign policy issue until now. 
It has lied about Gaza every single day because it's completely complicit in the genocide. It has lied about the possibility of negotiating with Putin because the goal of the Ukraine war, the goal is an American goal to surround Russia and to weaken Russia because this is a war that started with the overthrow of Yanukovych, not with the special military operation in February 2022. Uh, now, that's one key point to understand. I don't come to that conclusion happily or because I'm a radical or because I'm some crazy person. I've been involved in international politics and international economic reform for 44 years. I've seen everything. I know dozens of today's heads of state. I speak at the top levels around the world. I see directly in front of my eyes. I hear privately in conversations. The U.S. government lies every day. Maybe everybody would say, okay, naturally, but most people don't feel that fact. They talk about Western values and blah, 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 but they don't understand that the U.S. has been, and it has been so for decades. Now, then comes your question. The main I define as the New York Times and the Washington Post, by the way, were antagonistic to the government and would reveal secrets and would do investigative reporting. And Seymour Hirsch was on the staff of the New York Times, after all. And the New CIA at work. Hello? Hello? Yes, we can see you again. There was a disruption. Good. Okay. Thank you. I'm so sorry. Uh, it's quite remote where I am. Uh, so I was saying that uh, when I was young, the New York Times and the Washington Post were a kind of watchdogs of government. They revealed the secret bombing by the U.S. Uh, in Cambodia. They revealed uh, the Watergate scandal. Uh, they uh, published the Pentagon Papers. When I said recently to a friend of mine who is a, new, a very senior New York Times uh, correspondent and a classmate of mine from 50 years ago, I said, what happened to uh, the New York Times? He said, that paper that you knew is dead and gone. That's from my classmate and one of the most senior people on the paper. The paper does not regulate, does not challenge the government at all. The same is true with the Washington Post, which is often called a mouthpiece for the CIA itself, the place where we read the trial balloons by the CIA uh, in the columns of the Washington Post. So this is a mystery uh, to some extent for me. I'm told it shouldn't be a mystery. This is the corporate uh, sector. This sector is deeply intertwined with the military industrial state, both uh, advertising and personal connections. Uh, it is uh, said, and I think quite plausibly, that the CIA has its own people in senior positions uh, in these media, and that these really are outlets. I can tell you as a personal matter, Though I know 
so much firsthand about Ukraine and Russia because I was involved as economic advisor to Gorbachev, to Yeltsin, and to Kuchma. The New York Times will not publish a piece by me. Not 700 words. And that is not just a personal complaint. We actually reached a stage where they had copy edited a piece of mine and then told me at the end, so sorry, we're not going to run it. Then they recently invited me to submit a piece about Pakistan. And I described how the US government had brought down Imran Khan. And then they said, no, thank you, Mr. Sachs. We're not going to run a piece like this. So the mainstream media, for me, which was an open door for <laughs> decades, because I'm one of the Americans that has high level firsthand knowledge. I've advised three secretaries general of the UN. I've advised dozens of heads of state on various economic and financial matters over the last 40 years. They will not publish me. I cannot appear on mainstream television on MSNBC or on CNN, except when it's about climate change, I have to say, because then CNN has me. But when it's about foreign policy, they will not include me, even though I used to be a regular on these shows. So our mainstream media have really closed down. Now, in Europe, it seems to be the same. Everything about the European situation is hard for me to understand. European leaders are more sophisticated. They understand Russia better. They understand reality better. They understand the United States better. They understand NATO better. But I have had senior European leaders tell me there's nothing we can do. They treat us like children in Washington. This is unbelievable to me how a European leader can let themselves be treated like children. But this is, I'm told this, I'm not surmising this, I'm told this by prime ministers. And then I have conversations with leaders in Europe who tell me privately one thing, and then the very next day said the opposite in public. I had said that the, this war was caused by NATO enlargement, the war in Ukraine. This is a US-led war, not a Putin war. This is a US-led war. And the leader said to me, you're right, you're absolutely right. I said, all it would take would be for Biden to pick up the phone and call Putin and say, we're not gonna enlarge NATO. You're right, you're absolutely right. And then this same leader said within days, the opposite, Ukraine must join NATO. This is a long standing, completely uh, clear, but uh, hidden agenda of the United States. I say completely clear for those of us who know it and have been around for 30 years. The US idea after 1992 was complete domination, hegemony, full spectrum dominance, and surround and weaken Russia, even divide Russia along ethnic lines. That's been the CIA plan all along. Every president has gone along with this. But you cannot get a word in, in the mainstream media about this. You can't get any European leader to talk about the truth, even basic facts, other than Viktor Orban or Fico in Slovakia, and then when they do, they're branded as heretics, Putin lovers, traitors, uh, people who need to be punished. And the worst of all of this, the real collapse in Europe is in Germany, because at least Angela Merkel had a point of view. And I personally like her and respect her. But Schultz stands by next to the person who ordered the destruction of Nord Stream and keeps completely silent and completely subservient to the United States, even though the European economy is largely being blown up, except for Norway, which is pumping more natural gas to Europe. But the rest of uh, continental Europe is in a disaster because of this war. So 
On your question, I can't give you the definitive answer. I can only bear witness. I can bear witness to the fact that the U.S. government lies, that the war in Ukraine could have been avoided altogether in December 2021 had Biden just talked to Putin and said, you know, NATO is not going to enlarge. The war could have been ended in March 2022 with an agreement reached between Ukraine and Russia that the United States rushed in to block and the UK also, because remember, the UK will always side with the United States, but more enthusiastically because they love empire, even though they lost their empire. So they just can't believe their good luck that they have the United States carrying on the good old Anglo-Saxon tradition. But other than, but you'll, why the media, the mainstream media won't say a word about any of this is a terrible sign of our state of our society and a terrible reality that I cannot fully explain because I don't know whether it's fear, prudence, uh, subordination, uh, CIA plants directly, advertising fears, the military industrial complex. There are many theories and I can't really explain because I know these editors personally. I was teachers of some of them. I was colleagues, uh, I was student uh, colleagues uh, at Harvard uh, College uh, with uh, some of them. And I cannot explain that we have no grown up discussions at all right now. Every word is a lie. So I'll leave it. Uh, and then one yeah. last point about the, the alternative media. It's very noisy. You hear everything on it, but you also hear the truth on it if you know where to look. So my strategy is to watch Russian channels, Indian channels, Chinese channels, as well as Western European and American channels and try to use a 360 degree perspective, as well as the privilege of being able to speak to top diplomats around the world each day to try to understand the truth because I understand that I'm not gonna hear it from my own government. Thank you very much. I understand you have to rush off now, is that correct? Or have you, have if, you if, been... there's a quest, if there's a question or two, I would well, certainly be able yes, to, very to, good. to stay uh, for well, yeah. you say, well, you started answering the question on alternative media because you said uh, that you were willing to or are willing to bear witness. And there are other people willing to bear witness. But we have heard how the New York Times, the CNN, the big mainstream media treat people like uh, you. And this is why I was interested to hear your opinion of, about the alternative media. You see, as I said at the beginning, all of us here have seen you countless times on YouTube, and you've had a tremendous influence, I dare to say, in the world. So what is the impact of this? And of course, we are aware that uh, the controllers of the YouTube and the Facebook and the Twitter, they can do the same as the controllers of New York Times and Washington Post uh, uh, can do. This is one question. And another one, uh, I would like to ask you about your evaluation of the importance of the Julian Assange affair and WikiLeaks. Uh, is, what, what, what is your prediction here? Well, you can't predict what will happen to Julian Assange. Nobody can in, 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 amongst us. But the consequences of the whole affair in general, your opinion on that, please. Yes, so on, on the alternative media, so far uh, there have been voices uh, that use some care in their language, but stay on YouTube uh, and uh, the, the other uh, Western-based social media. I participate in a lot of discussions, uh, as you've mentioned. It's very interesting for me, unlike five or 10 years ago when I was very common on mainstream media, uh, 
you know, I, I had uh, people who saw that, but mainly in Washington or New York. Literally, when I walk in the streets of uh, Ethiopia, <laughs> even this rural area, people say, are you Jeffrey Sachs? I watch you on YouTube. So it's quite interesting, uh, the, the reach of this that is quite unusual. That's true. I found that in China, in all over the world. People are watching YouTube channels. So it's very interesting for me uh, for exactly the reasons you're asking. Uh, it's a sociological uh, issue and uh, the spread of information. Of course, it's a very noisy medium. It's a self-publishing medium, uh, but uh, it, it, you can be uh, reached. Now, I have another policy, which is that when I'm invited to speak on Russian television, uh, I accept. Uh, or on Chinese television, or just about any uh, television. I'm on Ethiopian, Cameroonian, uh, and so forth. And then people attack me. How dare you speak on Russian television? Are you a traitor? And of course, the answer is I'm trying to communicate. We need to make bridges. Uh, the whole approach of the imperial state is to say that the other side is pure evil, that there's no one to talk to, uh, and that anyone that has anything to do with the other side is a traitor, a Putin lover, uh, and so forth. And uh, my feeling is exactly the opposite. We should use our digital tools to make as much connectivity as possible. And people say, oh, but you're being used for propaganda. My own view of this, for whatever it's worth, is that I hold myself responsible only for my own words and my own views, and I try to be extremely careful with my language. But I, even if I'm on a medium that other people say, oh, that's propaganda, I say, but I am responsible for my own views, and I want to communicate because I want to be in dialogue with other places so that we can make peace rather than having this terrible, false, statement that there's no one to talk to. Look at Putin's interview, by the way, with Tucker Carlson. A couple of things can be said about this. First, all of the response in the mainstream Western media was, first, Tucker Carlson is a traitor, and second, that the uh, interview was boring. That was repeated by the mainstream media. Now, partly because they want us to have an attention span of 10 seconds, and President Putin spoke in paragraphs or chapters. I thought it was a fascinating interview. I know a lot about the history. I know a lot about modern history of Russia and Ukraine. And he said a lot of very interesting things that we should take down and then analyze. But our newspapers refused to take the interview seriously. They only wanted to characterize it emotionally. It's propaganda. It's boring. It's rambling rather than talking about the substance. This is a kind of brain death of the West right now. What are we doing? Are we just gonna be in a coma? Or are we going to talk, listen, engage, argue, debate, but not kill each other in the process, but actually listen? The other thing that President Putin said repeatedly in that interview beforehand and after is we're open to negotiation. I want to know, did uh, my dear friend Jonas Garstore say, we should explore negotiations? I don't think so. Did President Macron say, oh, oh, we should at least try negotiations? Absolutely not. Did uh, Chancellor Schultz say that? Of course not. Did the White House say that? You have to be kidding. The whole theory is never negotiate because we're dealing with a with a, with, with a long-term U.S. strategy, much of it covert, a lot of it CIA, to weaken Russia, not to talk to Russia, not to reason with Russia, not to uh, negotiate with Russia. So we keep the false line. There's no one to talk to, even as the other side says, we're ready to talk. <laughs> so this is the absurdity of it. It's as if we're not grown-ups not capable of listening with our own eyes. Now, when it comes to Julian Assange, my main point is the following. 
the biggest crime in America is leaking confidential information. That's what really interests the Justice Department. That's what really interests uh, the White House. Why? Because if you are an imperial state, well, then you need to have deniability about the criminal activities you're carrying out. The United States overthrows governments as a very bad habit, but they're all, quote, denied. No, no, Mr. Sachs, that's a conspiracy theory. Well, it is a conspiracy theory because they are conspirators. That's their job. It's not even a surprise. It's not even close. If you don't believe in conspiracies, you do not understand the United States government at all. That's not speaking as someone crazy. That's speaking as an analytical point. They do covert operations. This is documented on dozens of books on my bookshelf. So Julian Assange is a threat to that. One of the key memos that uh, WikiLeaks posted is a 2008 cable from William Burns, who was then the US ambassador to Russia, back to Condoleezza Rice, the national security advisor, saying it, the title of the cable was Niet means Niet. And the substance of the cable was that the entire Russian political class draws a bright red line against NATO enlargement to Ukraine. And by the way, I, if I were Russian, I would say the same thing. The last thing I would want is the U.S. on my 2,000 kilometer border, knowing that the U.S. pension for regime change and for every other trickery. But that memo would never have come to light. Now William Burns is our CIA director. How do we know about this crucial memo, which you can just Google and read, and I happen to uh, hyperlink to uh, quite frequently? Because Julian Assange did a public service. He made it known. That is his great crime. He told the truth. And Ed Snowden, who is also a very brave person, and I had a long conversation with him in Moscow, what is his, quote, crime? His crime is exposing the crimes of the US government. That's his crime. He should be revered for doing that. He exposed criminality. Our government agencies are not supposed to be spying on me, but they do. And Ed Snowden helped us to understand how, because that's the only way we find out. Congress in the US does nothing to investigate anything. They're also just cheerleaders of war because they're funded by the military industrial complex because the military industrial complex has munitions factories in their districts and by design has aimed to have them in all the districts in the country. And that's by the way, how Biden sells the, uh, the arming of Ukraine. He, he tells the Congressman, but the money's not really going to Ukraine. It's going to your district. It couldn't be simpler. It couldn't be cruder. It couldn't be more stupid and dangerous. But the only way we find out about most of this is through Julian Assange, WikiLeaks, Ed Snowden, whistleblowers. This is true about so many issues. The truth comes out not because the US government says a word of the truth, but because someone is brave enough to disclose it. Now, where are we going in the US on this? Nowhere good, most likely, because the Democrats, which are a little bit like centrist social Democrats, you know, they're supposed to be the center left. We don't have a, a left in the United States. We don't even have a center in the United States. But in any event, they have become all warmongers. And so the alternative, Donald Trump is a, a person of tremendous psychological instability and guaranteed governmental instability. And so we don't have right now a direction. And the Congress is generally lost without principles. They all know they're united on one point that they hate China, which is again a, a pseudo hatred 
I don't think any of them knows the slightest thing about China, probably never visited China, knows nothing about Chinese statecraft, but they know that China's the enemy because they chant as a mantra, the Communist Party of China, Communist Party of China, CPC. You can't believe how stupid these people are. I mean, ignorant, let me just say ignorant, completely uneducated, crude, and warmongering. Now, I'll just close again by asking the question, why the heck is Norway <laughs> siding with the US so much? <laughs> when it should be able to understand all of these things much more clearly. Well, you mentioned some brave people. I would like to add one, Professor Jeffrey Sachs. Thank you very much you for very being much. with us. So good to be with you.